Anybody kind of feel down for any reason? Diane doesn't. She's taking her she's taking her antidepressants, so she's very in good mood. But we're so happy that y'all are here. But I'd like to do something if you could. Just hold up your hands like this. Just like your ten fingers up, everybody. You can put them back down in your lamp for a second and just take a few minutes and look at your hands and count ten blessings. Okay. Ten blessings, and don't tell anybody what they are. But just count them, and as you, you know, count them, put your fingers, and, you know, put your finger down. And, but just, that's what we need to do for tonight, yeah. is just count our blessings. I'm going to cheat, though. I was just telling our brothers and sister here, you know, we, we live in America. Praise we live God. in America. Amen. I'm so thankful that we were raised in America. And thanks to many, many people, we still are in a free country. Amen. So I'm so grateful. Joan has already run out of fingers. So she's, we're just very grateful about what God has done for us and just our friends. And there's so many, so many things. So just count your blessings and it's going to give you a great joy. Great joy. Just, just to think about what God has done for us and what we did. And you know, we got air conditioning, don't we? My goodness. Woo. Uh, anybody here raised without air conditioning? Just two of us, but everybody else said no. Window coolers, remember the window coolers and things that people used to have? So we're just blessed. Amen. So. We just want to proclaim that God is so good. God is so
me sometimes and say, I wonder what Daddy's doing in heaven. I wonder what Eddie's doing. I said, well, he's probably fishing. And yeah, they like to fish. Jesus loves to cook fish. Uh -huh. he, doesn't, he doesn't deep fat fry it. He grills it. But it's still good. I'm telling you. So Daddy's fishing. I was just wondering what Kay here is doing. Yeah. She's probably at a dance. I'm thinking, or running in a track meet. Or doing something fun. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my Lord has taught me to say. sing that hallelujah and Lord is the day when my faith shall be signed the clouds be rolled back like a scroll I like this part the trump shall resound and the So it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well. Is that all right? This is the big number one. Let me put it in a different key. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Tu 
The Bible tells us to clap your hands, all you people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And when you clap your hands together, it's a it, we're in a we're, you're doing battle with it with in a in a kingdom you cannot see, but it causes derision, derision in 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 the enemy's camp when you clap your hands. It causes confusion in the enemy's camp when you clap your hands. Uh -huh. And so you can feel, when you clap your hands, I can feel the atmosphere change. Do you all feel it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. together? Mm -hmm. And it, it changes the atmosphere. So it, I just thank you so much. And because clapping your hands, all you people, and shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Yeah. Why? Because he's already triumphed. He's already done it all. Amen. Yes. And when he paid it all, we're going to we have a communion tonight. When Jesus paid it all, he paid it all. Yes. Amen. Forever yes. and ever and ever. Mm -hmm. He didn't go to the cross just for a little joke or for something to do. He paid the price. Man, we, we're so grateful. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. yes, sir. Well, bless you guys. Okay. Shall we? Gather at the river. We shall. Gather at the river. Uh, thanks for bringing this microphone. You're welcome. Pretty one. Well, it's just like the one we got. It's a little shinier than that. This, one. this microphone that Jim's got, uh, 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 you, you probably don't really care, but it's made by a Sure company, S H U R E company. And it's, a, it's, it's, yeah, go ahead, Jimmy. Pretty, isn't it? It's just like this one. But it's, it's called an SM58, SM58. They cost about $100. It was made in 1958. Now, Jimmy, I was going to say that. It, it, it was designed and made in 1958. This microphone was? No, it's, no, it's a little better. It was designed, this one was made in Japan probably about a week ago. There you go. But, but the thing about it is, this is, this is you, you, if you look at somebody singing in, in country and western or anything, they have this. This is a hundred dollar microphone. They use they they could use a fifty thousand dollar. There's none better than this. You can drop it as Jim does all the time. You can't hurt it. And well, we we can hurt it, but most people can. But My cheaper one fell on the floor last week and it broke apart. <laughs> These don't break apart, do no, they, David? No. Well, I can break them. <laughs> have you ever done it? Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, I just need to turn it over to my grandkids a little bit. They'll they'll take care of it for sure. <laughs> oh man, Ralph and Phyllis, you're here. Hey, we made it. Did y'all do any ministering today? A little bit, yes. Good. Do you want to give a report? Well, uh, we have an opportunity to minister to the uh, soldiers coming in uh, today. They at Fort Sill. Organized out here on Fort Sill. Uh, there's just been a whole bunch of new, uh, whatever you call them, units yeah, coming yeah. in from other bases, transferred and, and stuff. And so a great opportunity for the Word of God to get out and to give them encouraging. How many soldiers were there? Well, uh, well there wasn't many tonight because of the, they're, they're changing things. Uh-huh, they're in transition. But, uh, the one on Friday night, is, a lot of times they'll have... Uh, let's see, maybe eight to eight hundred to a thousand soldiers listening to the gospel, how to live, and uh, wow. that that happens on on Friday night. What a great opportunity! Yes. Yeah, we're praying for y'all. Mm. Thank you for doing that. Well, we get to go in on some, a lot of work <laughs> other people have done. Uh, I tell them, just give me a broom, and I'll be happy. <laughs> Y'all are always willing to serve. Absolutely. Right here at Brookridge, I see him doing that, that choo-choo train going across with all those chairs back and forth. Uh, Y'all are so good about doing that, praying for people. They, they work in the physical. They work in the spiritual. They are there for anybody that needs them. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate that. And did you know what? I was listening to the Jonathan Kahn today. He's a rabbi, and uh, he has a church up in uh, New York City. Yes. He does some great... He's a, uh, he's a believer in Jesus Christ. Yes, uh, he's a Jewish rabbi, believer in Jesus Christ. Man, he does some great work. Mm -hmm. I was listening to him this morning, maybe maybe about 8 o'clock. Yeah. Before I got up out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> I was still in bed. When you up so early. <laughs> 
I was, I was uh, preparing for tonight. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, uh, he was talking about how, you know, don't wait for your circumstances to change before you praise the Lord. That's right. Amen. If you want to change your circumstances, start praising the Lord. That's right. Praise the Lord, and that will change your circumstances. He said, Paul and Silas did not wait for their circumstances to change before they started praising the Lord right there in prison. That's right. They, were, they had to be hurting. You know, stocks, those stocks don't feel good. It has to hurt, be painful. But they had the strength and energy to praise the Lord, sing praises to God, and boy, their circumstances changed dramatically. Isn't that right? Their circumstances, those, they, the, the earthquake came, the jail doors opened up, and uh, they saw the jailer come in and accept Jesus Christ. And all of his family, all of his family accepted Christ. Amen. Praising the Lord will change your praise circumstances. God. So don't hesitate to praise the Lord. That's what Mary Ann Carson does. I asked Mary Ann Carson, I said, Mary Ann, how are you doing? She said, well, I never have felt bad. Now that's something to praise the Lord for, isn't it? I never have felt bad. You know, a positive attitude goes a long way, doesn't it? Just praise the Lord. And guess what? Her, her alcohol level was 96%. Wow. I mean, no, her, her, her oxygen level. No wonder she's feeling good. She's bigger than Yes. When you're talking about the, you prison, the prison cells, of that old, that old yes. song reminded me of, a, it says the chains that seem to bind you serve only to remind you that they drop powerless behind you when you praise the Lord. Oh, so true. I don't know. I don't know that song. The Imperials. Imperials, long time ago. Oh, wait, was that on uh, secular radio, or was that all uh, religious? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I just remember it from way back. Well, uh, were were any of y'all around in the in the sixties? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you remember uh, a Barbara Streisand song. Does this title remind you of a Barbara Streisand song? People, people who need people. What are they? Luckiest people in the world. Yes, exactly, man. The people who need people are the luckiest people in the world. That was Barbara Streisand. I don't know. That must have been from a movie. Maybe Funny Girl. Was it Funny Girl? It probably was. I bet it was. Yes, you bet. But, you know, that's, that's true, isn't it? We, we need one another. People who need people. Man, God has made it possible for us to actually recognize that. You know, unbelievers don't really realize that. They don't really see that they need other people. They just have agendas of their own. They've got things they want to accomplish in life. Sometimes they don't mind running over other people to get what they want. But when you realize that we need people, that's a, that's a gift from God. A gift from God. We, we need people. And you know what? When God created everything... He liked what he created. Do you know that? Yes, sir. When he started creating, he, he said, things are good. What I have done here is good. I like that. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Power. There's power in the Word of God. He spoke and the light appeared. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. He said, there's a difference between the light and the darkness. And he says, I like the light. I like the light. The light is good. Guess what? Everything he created, he said, was good. He said the land and the vegetation were good. He said the moon and the stars were good. He said the sea creatures and the birds were good. He said the animals were good. You go down Genesis chapter 1, step by step, everything was good. At the end, he says all that God made was good. All that God made was good. And it's still true today. Whatever God does is good. Whatever God does, He's good all the time. But do you know what? God did very shortly find out that there was something that was not good. This is what He says. He says, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. I'm always amazed. Joan and I love to go home on Thursday night. We record the show alone. And uh, it usually comes on, what, 8 or 9 o'clock, something like that, on Thursday night. So we like to go home and watch that after we come here. And it's always amazing to me how people do not really understand how horrible it is to be alone. You know, they, they've got 10 people out there trying to see how long they can survive. 
and just being totally alone, totally alone. Nobody, no camera crew out there, nobody out there. If they did have a problem, it'd take them 45 minutes to get there. They are totally alone. They do have a, a satellite phone, so they can contact them if they have a problem. But you hope it's not something that's a real emergency because it's going to take them a while to get there. I'm amazed they haven't had anybody die yet. They're out there with snakes. They're out there with bears. They're out there with uh, mountain lions. Uh, they're, they're just out there with all kinds of stuff. And, but you know what? That's not the reason most of them leave. Most of them leave after they've been there about 15 or 20 days. They get a totally different perspective on life. Because, you know, they start realizing, what am I doing out here all by myself? I've got a family back here at home. I've got a family at home. You know, my son's having his birthday, and I'm out here. My wife's having a baby, and I'm out here. It's a totally, you know, before he got out there, he thought, hey, I'll just be out there for 30 days. You know, maybe 45 at the most. You know, my wife will have another baby later. You know, if we have $500,000, that'll change everything for us. Isn't it amazing how after 20 days all alone, they say, this isn't worth it. I just need my family. I need people. And you know, a lot of times it's just that. They're just lonely. But many, many times also when they're all alone out there, memories from their childhood start creeping up. <laughs> and sometimes they're not such pretty memories. You know, when they've been real, real busy all their life doing all kinds of stuff, they don't have time to think about a lot of those things. But when they're out there all by themselves, memories start coming back to them. And uh, sometimes it's just more than they can bear. They just really say, no, I, I've got to get out of here. I can't, I can't take this anymore. It's real interesting to see the different personalities that are out there when they're all alone. But God said, it's not good to be alone. It's not good to be alone. So he said, I'm going to make someone for Adam. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Yes, that's what he was so pleased, wasn't he? He said, I like this girl. <laughs> She's just what I needed. He could tell that right off the bat, isn't that right? He said, I like this girl. We're going to get along great. And they did. You can't, it's hard for us to even to imagine those early days when they were together. There was no curse. They, there was no reason to ever uh, doubt the other person. Isn't that right? They never had any doubts about one another. They, they never did have any suspicions. You know, Elvis Presley had that song, Suspicion, right? I don't know. Did, did he actually write did that? Or did he, was it right before him? Yeah. Suspicion torments my heart. You know, no, there was no, no, uh, none of that back there. They didn't have any reason for that. They just got along great. But you know what? Even when you add one more person to the mix, it can get challenging. <laughs> and it can get messy. And it did for them. Isn't that right? Just two people, and all of a sudden, there's a big, big, huge challenge. It says, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Well, we all know the consequences of that, right? We've all been suffering as a result of it. Our daughter Jennifer so often would say, I'm so mad at Adam and Eve. <laughs> If it hadn't been for them, we'd all be doing great. <laughs> she was just so mad at them. They did mess things up for all of us, isn't that right? It got real, real messy. It's been messy ever since. It's still messy today, isn't that right? There's just a lot of stuff going on because of sin. That's exactly what happened. And boy, it's hard for people to get along with one another. You don't have to take a course in history, isn't that right, Roy? Roy's a historian. You don't have to take a course in history to find out it's hard for people to get along. People have a long, long history of conflict, wars, oh, yeah. everything about it. It's real interesting to me about how many, many people today, a lot of people want to blame all the world's wars in history on Christianity. People have always been fighting about religion. 
No, that's not why people have always been fighting. That has been the, the reason for some wars, but guess what? Genghis Khan didn't conquer all the people around him because of religion, did he? He just wanted their food. <laughs> he said, I'll take their food, I'll take their land, I'll take their crops. That's really what it's all about. People want what other people have, and it just gets real, real messy. People are selfish, isn't that right? The Apostle Paul tells us that we have this beautiful opportunity to overcome that nature within us to be selfish. And that's one of the glorious benefits of believing in Jesus Christ. You receive the Holy Spirit of God, and all of a sudden you have this supernatural capacity to actually love people more than you love yourself. Love your neighbor more than you love yourself. Or the Bible says love, it, love them as you love yourself. <laughs> love your neighbor as yourself. You know? And so the, the Apostle Paul says... Do nothing out of selfish ambition and vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Now, I don't think he'd be saying that to unbelievers, do you? He would know they would not have the ability to do that. But he knew he was talking to some really good believers in Jesus Christ. And he says, I want to tell you a secret to life. You just give up all of your selfish ambitions, all the things that you crave for yourself, and he says all those vain things that really don't amount to anything. It's all about trying to build yourself up in the eyes of other people and in the eyes of yourself. He says, rather in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking on your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the other person. He says, be thinking about what can I do to help my neighbor? What can I do to help my wife? What can I do to help my children? What can I do to help my parents? You know, how well, you're not really thinking about the sacrifices that you have to make. No, you're just thinking, what can I do to help? You just have a desire. That's love, isn't it? That's what love's all about. A love, it says, I want to help them even if it costs me something. He says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Now, you know he's talking to believers, isn't that right? He's talking to people who know Jesus Christ. They're aware of the sacrifice Jesus Christ has made. They're, they're aware of the fact of this great love that Jesus Christ had for us that made it possible for him to come down here and give up everything just so that we could be saved. He says, you have the same mind yourself. He says, that's going to help you in your relationships. It's going to help you realize how valuable people really are. We need one another. He says, be willing to go the extra mile for people. It will pay dividends in the long run. He says, who, Jesus Christ, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Man, he, he had everything, didn't he? He, you talk about ambition, if he wanted to become the greatest person that ever lived, he could have, couldn't he? He could have, he could have been, had more money, than, than Bill Gates or Elon Musk. He, he could have achieved more than, uh, than President Putin. He could have achieved more than President Biden. Uh, he, could achieve, he could have achieved anything that he wanted to be, to do. He could have conquered the whole world. But he gave it all up. He did not consider those things to be important. Why? Because he was wise enough to realize they're not important. <laughs> he was smart enough to realize those things don't mean anything. He had the wisdom of God. He understood everything from an eternal viewpoint. What if you did gain the whole world but lost your soul? That's right. It wouldn't mean anything. He says Jesus understood that. And, and when we have the mind of Christ, which we do, did you know God lives within us? We have the mind of Christ. We can actually see the life from that kind of a wisdom point of view. We can see what's really, really important. These people are more important than our personal well-being. We have to be willing to do that. And we need to be. We will be blessed whenever we do that. God lives within us. We can have the mind of Christ. The other day a lady was asking, you know, this is a common question that you hear from people, like how do they get this together that Jesus Christ was God and at the same time he was praying to God? Was he God or was he praying to God? That's a good question, isn't it? Jesus is God, and yet he goes off and prays to God? And so 
I, I thought about that. I thought that's a really good question. And you know what? The way I look at that is that God is everywhere, isn't He? That's right. God is everywhere. That's right. But Jesus in His human body was not everywhere. Mm-hmm. He, was, he was just like us. He was in one place at one time because He was a human. That was one of the limitations He had as a human being. He wasn't everywhere at one time. But guess what? The God who lived inside of Him was everywhere. The God who lived inside of Him was everywhere. And, you know, that's true for you and I. Isn't that a beautiful blessing? The God who lives inside of us is everywhere. We're just not as connected to that God as Jesus was. (laughs) Jesus was totally connected to the God who's everywhere. As a human being, He wasn't everywhere, but He was completely and totally one with the God who is everywhere. The God who is omnipresent, the God who is omnipotent, the God who is everything, who created all things. He was absolutely one with Him. And and that's what Paul is saying here. We can become one with God too. Because the God who is everywhere lives inside of us. The God who is everywhere is inside of us. So when we're praying, we often picture God way up there sitting on a throne, right? Right? But we could just as easily picture the God who lives within us. That God who created everything lives within us. And it's just a beautiful thing to pray to the God who lives within us. And what a wonderful thing that is to know that God lives within us. All because of Jesus and His death on the cross. Jesus Christ and His shed blood purified the temple, cleansed the temple, made it possible for the God who is everywhere and created all things and is in control of all things lives within us. Everywhere we go, God goes. We have this potential to connect with Him like Jesus did. Jesus just did it better than we do. (laughs) But He says, I want you to grow in your capacity to do that. If you open your mind, if you open your heart, study the Word of God, let the Holy Spirit work, you will become more and more one with the God who created everything and is is everywhere. He said, yes, uh, Jesus didn't consider it uh, blasphemy at all to consider himself equal with God because he was filled with God. He was God. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. He gave it all up, was willing to limit himself to a human body to experience that. You know, when he became a human, he, he did actually experience what it's like to be limited, right? Because as a human being, he wasn't everywhere at one time. So he experienced what we experience in the sense that we're not everywhere at one time. We're not in control of everything. And so he experienced that side of the equation as well as a human being. He was willing to do that for for you and for me. What did John say? This is what Jesus actually prayed. John recorded it. Jesus in his prayer said, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, the message of the apostles. He says, I know these apostles are going to go out preaching and teaching about Jesus. They're going to tell the world about me. He says, they... I pray for them that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. See, Jesus is talking as a human being, but he understands fully that he is one with God and God is one with him. Wow. A human being, one with God. (laughs) You are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us. See, he says, I'm praying that they will discover what that's like to be one with God, one with Jesus Christ, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The only Jesus that the world is going to see is the Jesus that's in you and me. Boy, what a privilege. What a privilege, but what a responsibility as well. What a responsibility. The world is looking for Jesus. They may not know it, but they are. He is the solution to every problem that we face. They're looking for Jesus, and the only Jesus they'll see is the Jesus they see in us. Praise the Lord. We have that opportunity. May we ever grow more and more faithful in our ability to represent Jesus Christ. We are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. 
may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me. He's speaking as a human right now. Speaking as a human, he's speaking as a human being. He says, God, you gave me the glory of the heavenly realm. The glory of God lives within me. He knew that. He says, I have given them that same glory. What a gift. You are blessed. Did you know that? You are blessed. You have been given the glory of God. It lives within you. He says, I have given them that glory that they may be one as we are one. That should, that's God's priority for us. That should be one of our top priorities every day is to be one with Jesus and one with everyone who believes in Jesus. He didn't say, just be one with the ones that are in your religious group, did He? He didn't say just be one with the one that are ones that are in your denomination or in your family. There we have all kinds of people that we like more than we like other people, isn't that right? We can get closer to other people, some people than others. But he says, try to be one with every believer. Every believer. Whatever their background is, you know, regardless of their skin color, regardless of their financial uh, well being, whatever may be put as a top priority to experience oneness with them. They're growing in the glory of God. God is, if they're a believer, they've been given the glory of God, right? I have given them the glory that you gave me. They've been given the glory of God. He says, endeavor to relate to that, to recognize that, and to help one another grow in that. We grow, we grow with help from our friends, don't we? We need a little help from our friends. God has given us the body of Christ. And we grow in our oneness with one another as we grow in our oneness with Jesus Christ. We're going to observe the communion at this point, and guess what? That symbolizes oneness. It symbolizes oneness with God, oneness with one another. It's absolute, pure fellowship, communion with God, made possible by the broken body and shed blood of Jesus Christ. This ritual, this ceremony, symbolizes that which is most precious to us, our fellowship with God, our oneness with God, the glory of God being made manifest in us. Praise the Lord. If you would hold on to these elements, we'll take them all together. receive these elements we're praising God this is a ceremony of praise we're praising God for all that he's done for us he has blessed us he's given us the glory of God we share it with one another night before Jesus was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it saying take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me in the same manner he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Amen. Until He comes.
Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time. It's precious. It's precious because you're precious. It's precious to us just knowing that we're precious to you. Thank you so much for loving us the way you do. No one could love us the way you do. And we are so encouraged by that love. It motivates us. It gives us strength and courage to know that we can become more like you as we open our hearts to the glory of Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, you'd bless us as we say together the prayer that the Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 May the Lord bless and keep Amen. you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Bill. Amen. It's so good to be back. <laughs> Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. People who need people, and no man is an island. You understand? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You could take this, I believe you could take this group of people, everybody in this room, put us on an island somewhere, and there are enough gifts in this room, we could have a real nice little civilization. We'd have a lot of teachers, there's some plumbers, and people who know how to put a roof on, and there's some people who know how to prepare food, but we could probably do pretty well. By myself, I would be a wreck. By yourself, you would be a wreck, because we need each other. Amen? So much. So much. You ready? I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Look away beyond the blue. You can put your hands together one more time. Hallelujah. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Look away beyond the blue. To Lord, oh, to Lord, oh, do you remember me? To Lord, oh, to Lord, oh, do you remember me? I've got a home in glory land and I'll shine the sun. I've got a home in glory land and I'll shine the sun. Look away beyond the blue. It's going to rain here in a few minutes, right. so be sure to put the windows up on your car, because it's fixing to rain a whole bunch here. He awesome. said with faith, yes. it's going to rain. Bless you guys. If you need any prayer, we're here to pray for you, with you. Ralph and Phyllis are here. You've got a royal priest sitting right next to you, so full of the Holy Spirit and, and full of God and love and sweetness, so just... And then pray for you anything take that you need. Of it. And take advantage yeah. of everybody. Good advantage. A good advantage. Yes. Amen? Amen. Bless you guys.